Hello everyone, Jay Whitner here with Space Headlines. We do a quick recap every week of what's going on in the space universe. Today we're going to be talking about the second week of July 2018. Our first item is over in Europe. The European Space Agency has issued a contract for Airbus to start designing a rover to collect samples on Mars. The Curiosity 2020 mission is supposed to gather up samples. Um, this would be later on to collect the samples. The design of this is underway. It's a $5 million contract, and the mission is targeted to launch in 2026. Russia just set a new speed record for Earth to the space station. They launched uh, the Progress 70 and got three tons of cargo from the surface of the Earth to the space station in under four hours, which um, if you've ever flown to Europe or Asia, that's really fast to go from Earth to the space station in under four hours. So uh, another milestone along the way to uh, space resupply, logistics, and so forth. Israel continues to make progress with their moon mission. This is a $95 million operation to send a craft to the moon that would be landing on the moon in February of 2019, if all the schedules hold. So only about six months from now, if all goes well. It's a 1,300 pound craft that uh, is involved here in the launches complements of the SpaceX rocket. Despite best efforts by SpaceX and Boeing, we continue to see slide uh, in the schedule for commercial crew. The, uh, the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, has issued various warnings about this as the program has uh, gone on. The recent news here was they believe that we could see a schedule slip by a year or so. This is, uh, is a big problem because the plan had been to shift all of the astronaut transportation uh, away from the Russians back to, uh, to American capabilities uh, in 2019 next year. That is uh, looking very problematic. So what they're trying to do now is to see if they can arrange to defer the, the last Soyuz crew uh, mission that we would be a part of into early 2020 to try to mitigate a gap of that we're looking at the possibility there might be no Americans on the space station for a while. Lockheed Martin has been doing a lot of work on 3D printing. What you're looking at here in this image is a, uh, is a big titanium piece that was 3D printed. This is uh, the, the dome for one of the fuel tanks. And it's four feet in diameter. So this is quite different than uh, the 3D printing most of us were accustomed to, which is these uh, small scale plastic uh, desktop kind of printers that you see around. Uh, this is a four foot diameter titanium thing to very high tolerances. And what Lockheed Martin is finding is this saves a lot of time and money and there's less waste and they really like the, uh, the 3D printing technology. We have a bit of history uh, be removed from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. We're talking about one of the launch complexes down there at uh, Cape Canaveral that launched uh, various important missions, including the first commercial uh, communication satellite. So you see in the image the, uh, the towers coming down to make way for the future, which is Moon Express is going to be using this area of Cape Canaveral Air Force Station to do some uh, lander testing. Uh, toward development of lunar landers. So uh, out with the old and in with the new. The White House has nominated a, a deputy administrator for NASA, and their name is James Moorhart. He's been uh, involved with the Senate for a long time as a Senate staffer. He has his, uh, his MBA, he has a law degree, and a great deal of experience in the Senate but not really much space experience. And uh, Administrator Bridenstine had been hoping for more of a tech-oriented person, 
but what we appear to be on track for now is to have the administrator with a lot of experience in Congress and the House of Representatives and the deputy administrator with a lot of experience in the Senate. So if this is the, the final group that is NASA's top management, they're just going to have to lean more heavily on the in-house expertise for technical matters. Um, but certainly they'll have the, uh, the inside track for dealing with Congress. That's it for our report covering the second week of July 2018. And we'll be back uh, in a bit with uh, our report on the third week of July. Take care and we'll see you then.